Hi everyone, welcome back to my Z80 computer series. So I'm taking a break from the VGA signals that we've been looking at in the last couple of videos and I'm moving my attention back to the keyboard. So a couple of videos ago I demonstrated this keypad here and I've got the, the same program running. So as I press a key it's being displayed over on the green LEDs or the ASCII code for that key. That worked quite nicely, I was quite happy with that. Um, the idea of building the, the small keypad first was to just prove the concept. Um, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to mount this, how the keys would mount in the in the case. I'm still not 100% certain about that, but I'm happy enough with, with this design here to now move on to a, a larger keyboard. So these arrived um, sometime in December. I've not had a chance to actually use them. I have had a quick look at them. And these are larger PCBs for the full size keyboard. This might not be the final design, but this should be fairly close to what we're eventually gonna end up with. Now I'm not 100% certain whether I've got all the spacing correct. I'm um, sure I'm going to hit some problem with these. What's this say here? 18th of November, actually, was when I designed this, this board. Um, I think I had it delivered sometime in December. So I've also printed this plate. Hoping that everything lines up. I'm hoping I've got all the spacing correct on the plate and also the spacing correct on the PCB. So I thought what I would do is snap the keys in the plate and then try the PCBs if it fits. Because if it doesn't fit then there's, there's no point really in soldering all the diodes onto the board. So... I believe they go this way. There, that was a lot of keys. So I guess it's the moment of truth. Which way around does this go? I believe 
Well, that is the enter key. And so I think that goes that way. Now, have you ever seen a grown man cry? Because if this doesn't fit, you might do. Well, it's looking, what is that? I'm not sure what that is. It's looking good. I mean, it's not pressing on, but it does look like things are lining up. I think <laughs> maybe one here. One key there looks out of position. Had to happen, didn't it? It had to happen. Now, just looking through everything else. Can you see that? I'm not sure I had that on camera. That one there. What key is that? Is that the enter key? Typical. Oh, it's actually it's popped out. Is that the reason? Ooh. It could be, it might be okay. Let's take it out for the minute. I think I'm confident enough to go ahead and solder all the diodes on. So I think everything else looks good. Just a question mark on that, on that enter key. And it looks correct. Yes, yeah, gone in. So we could be good. So I've soldered on all the diodes and I've also soldered on the connector because I realized that I wouldn't be able to get to that afterwards as well. So um, I think I can solder this on here now, soldering all the, the key switches. Just one thing I'm wondering about, and I can't remember from the last time, if I can fit the stabilizers afterwards at the end. Thinking that I can. I might just go back and check the previous video. I might just go back and check the previous video to see that I am sure about that. But yeah, the next thing would be to solder this on here and as before I think everything is good I think that end key is good it's just a little bit loose in the in the frame but that does look that looks well lined up and they all do to be honest so I think I can go ahead and solder that on okay so that was a bit of a disaster so after I said that I would check if I can fit the stabilizers afterwards, I didn't bother checking. I just went ahead and soldered on the, the circuit board on the back. And guess what? No, you cannot fit the stabilizers afterwards. Um, that was a nightmare. I had to um, unsolder the, the switch for the space bar the switch in here. That was quite difficult to get the solder out and get that switch removed. Did eventually manage to do that. Um, and then I found that fitting the stabilizers um, was really difficult. So the initial problem was I just couldn't get the metal bar past the switch because the switch is in the way. Even when I got the switch out, assembled the stabilizer, tried to fit it in. It was 
really difficult to get that in there. Um, but I did eventually manage to do it and you can see the the spacebar stabilizer is fitted. And if I press the spacebar at the very end of it, um, it's, it's working beautifully. Uh, it goes down perfectly level. Um, the stabilizer is really doing its job. So that's, that's really nice. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got the stabilizers in the other switches. Now I tried the backspace key here um, without a stabilizer and to be honest with you it's perfectly fine um technically yeah you two u switches do need a stabilizer but i think it's going to be fine without them this is only the initial first prototype so yeah if it's not perfect it, i'm probably going to make another one at some point um so i'm just going to press on without the stabilizers in in these positions i've got the main one in the space bar that's the only real important one so I'll, I'll press on. Um, there is a small problem, which I did try and resolve, but I couldn't. Um, I don't know how well it will show up, but I don't know if you can see from that. There is a slight bow. I'll try and focus the camera. There's a slight bow in it. Um, probably quite difficult for me to show you. Uh, but it's it's only, I mean, it is quite severe, actually, but it's not showing up very well on the camera. But you only need the slightest of, of pressure on it to pull it straight again. So I really don't think it's a problem. Um, it's, it just seems to be an unfortunate side effect of how the, the PCB is attached to the plate and the switches. I did initially think maybe the tolerance is slightly off by the tiniest of amounts. And I actually took all the switches out and I filed out all the square holes so that we're, there was a very slight piece of sideways movement in each switch. But I think um, it, it didn't help. Um, I reassembled everything and it's, it's still bowed. But like I said, it, it's only the, the very slightest of amount of pressure to pull it straight. So I think once it screws into the case, um, it's gonna be fine. So I'm going to stop waffling. I'm going to press on and probably the most exciting bit for me is to get the switches, get the keycaps on. Um, so I'll time lapse that. I'll fit them all and we'll speed the video up to save you watching that. Okay, so that's most of them. Now I'm struggling to remember um, what the remaining keys are, where they go. Um, obviously we want um, control on either side, but I'm hunting around for the right ones. 
Um, there's so many different sizes, I think. I think the one on this side just said CTRL. But I don't see it. I'm looking through all the keys. I know it must be here. interesting you see so many choices I'm not sure about the profile of these but there's so many choices of what I can do there it is look there it is tricky to get out Obviously we need a larger one in here, could be this one. I think they do really need the stabilizers. Um, yeah, I, I do admit they are slightly, slightly loose. You actually get like a, a twisting motion on the switch. If you can see that without the stabilizer in place. So they really do need them. Um, so I probably I'm going to have to try and get those in there at some point. I'm not going to do it right now though. So what's remaining over here? Shift key. Um, maybe this one. That's right. And I think, see this was forward slash, I think backslash went here. Which would be that one. And I could have got that wrong. I think I have actually. That's the wrong profile, that is. Because I can see another one here. I have a feeling, and I can even see a third one here. So it's all the same key, but they're different profiles, and I, th I believe we need the biggest one. Sure though. No, I think the biggest key is the first row, isn't it? I think that would be the top row. I think that's probably the correct profile. Pop him on there. Have a look at that. Yep, I believe that's correct. What are we missing? So I believe here, I think I was going to have, you'd normally have, um, I think you'd normally have control and then like a Windows or a Mac key and then Alt. Um, so I think I was going to go with Alt and Function. Which are here, are going to be hard to get out again. Just going to put these all over the place. So that one's Alt. Pr 
profile looks correct. And I think I decided I was gonna use function. You can always change these. Let's just tip them out. Make a real mess. Um, function. Check the profile, looks correct. Yeah, happy with that. So what remains in here? I haven't got another keyboard in front of me. I think it's the it's the at sign, isn't it? Because we we didn't have the at sign on the number two, and I think we're all also missing the hash symbol. So I think. Uh, so I've got the at sign here. Oh, is that a single quote? So maybe that is correct, an at sign in a single quote. Going to get them in the wrong positions, aren't I? Guaranteed. And then I think the other one is hash with the, the tilde symbol so the only keys i can see that look like they're the correct ones guarantee i'm going to get them more, wrong way around let me check that yep it is these two keys and they go this way around i mean not that this is a standard keyboard at all but keep things as standard as possible. Yeah, look at that. Profiles all look correct. I can see there's a bow in it. I don't know if you guys could see that. There is a definite bow in there, but I think, uh, like I said, just a small amount of pressure will pull it straight. So I'm not too worried about it. So you probably also noticed I did make a ribbon cable for it as well. Um, so that, I think I messed that up on the keypad as well. Had to rewire some of the, the prototype board, the trainer board. Um, these are really easy to make up. Um, there is an additional piece you can put on here and, and you can loop it around for a bit more. Um, strain relief, but I, I never never bother with that. I think they're quite they're quite secure as is. I mean, if you really tugged it, you'd probably pull it out. Um, and it's quite nice how that that fits on there like that. It's going to make the keyboard um, nice. If we ever need to take it out and take things apart, it's going to make it really nice. The fact it's on a plug, um, the sort of thing that they would exclude on the old vintage machines because to save cost. Um, but I mean, it's not that cost is no object here, but I'm not really that constrained with cost. I've made it kind of twice the length of the keyboard thinking, um, that should be long enough for anything I want to do anywhere. I want to plug that in should, should reach. Um, I just don't know if I've got the, this plug in the best orientation. What I've done is I just decided that I was going to fit the little lug at the the top away from the the ribbon um, and the red um, wire on the left and I did the exact same on the other end um, which means that unfortunately it means that let's see that this one's upside down and this one's the, the right way up um, as you fold it over on itself then they become the same way um, but I think my idea was I want both plugs at both ends, both sockets, both the keyboard end and the um, like the motherboard end, whatever we want to call that other board, um, to be wired exactly the same. So the fact that the red connector is on the left should mean that they are wired exactly the same, I believe. So that's nice. Um, so that's as far as I'm going to go for now. Uh, I'm not really ready for this keyboard. I'm kind of jumping the gun a bit building this. Um, but I was caught, it was sort of one of the, 
the parts of the project that I was most excited about. There, there are three parts of the project that I'm, I'm most excited about. One is the uh, VGA graphics, which is proving really difficult. Um, secondly, there was the, the mechanical keyboard aspect. I was quite excited to start working with mechanical keyboards. Um, and I have found this whole process um, such a joy, actually. Um, I'm learning quite a lot. I'm not an expert, as you know, and I'm making lots of mistakes, but that's how we learn. Um, and the, the third thing I was excited about was the, the RAM banking, the memory banking to add additional RAM. For some reason, as, as a child, when I saw that concept of RAM banking in the 128K spectrum, it really intrigued me. I thought it was fascinating how that worked, and I'm really excited to um, try and implement that myself. And I don't think that's going to be too difficult. Um, I think the most difficult part of the project is definitely going to be the VGA graphics. But um, we've got a mechanical keyboard here. I haven't tested it. I don't know if the circuit board works. No reason it shouldn't um, if I haven't made any mistakes. Um, what I'm wondering is, although this isn't really designed to go onto the trainer board, this is more for the final computer, I think to try it out, I think I'm going to put another socket um, that will fit this on the trainer board and I'll wire up another buffer on the trainer board um, and we should be able to get this this working on the trainer board main problem with the trainer board is we don't have a display I was thinking about a text display an LCD display as a separate device that could plug into the trainer board that would allow us to test the keyboard so I may or may not do that I'm just not really ready with the VGA graphics yet, so we can't really see this working. Um, but I think I will go ahead and get it connected to the trainer board so we can at least test it. Um, that'll be nice. But um, leave me comments. I know a lot of you were not passionate about how I did the cursor keys. This is specifically how I wanted them. Now I've built them and got them on here. I actually think it looks quite nice. Um, it looks better than I thought it was going to. Um, it might be a little awkward to use because it's quite unconventional, but it is um, kind of nostalgic to how the ZX Spectrum did it, the, at least the, the 128K ZX Spectrum. Um, and it, it allows the us to have a really compact keyboard with the minimum number of keys. Um, there's only 63 keys on here. My design allowed for 64, but I've only fitted 63 keys on this. Um, so it, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. But leave me your comments. You probably would have done things differently. So leave me your comments. Anyway, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.